Welcome to the Mind Your Career webinar series. My name is Rachel Burkhan Rommelfinger, and I work with career development team here at the University of Chicago in Hyde Park. And I'm delighted to welcome you to our webinar entitled Considering a Long-Term Career Transition. Today's speaker is Keith Spiro. Keith is a city manager for a Chicago suburb, a photographer, a world traveler, and of course, a career coach. And he brings extensive experience in management and efficiency to his coaching work. When I asked Keith what he wanted to be when he grew up, he honestly said the governor of Iowa. What an ambitious child he was. It's my pleasure to hand the controls over to Keith. All right. Well, uh, good morning or afternoon, depending on where you're listening to this. Where I'm at right now here in Chicago, it's a chilly, snowy uh, winter day. So I hope some of you are watching this from a nice tropical tropical area. Um, that's quite an introduction. I never thought of myself as a photographer, world traveler, city manager, and career coach, but I guess all of those things are true at this point in, in, uh, in my career. Um, just to add a few points, um, my wife uh, is my connection to the university. Um, she has a JD from the University of Chicago Law School and has served uh, the Alumni Board of Governors and the past uh, president of the Alumni Club of Chicago. And, and most recently, she worked at the university as uh, dean of students there at the law school. Uh, so I've got a little bit of background in understanding um, uh, the, the culture and, and certainly some of the folks who are alumni of, of the university. Um, as Rachel mentioned, my current uh, career focus is city management. I'm a city manager for a uh, near west suburb here in Chicago, and it's about a hundred employee organization. Um, I personally went through a bit of a career transition as I as I realized that in my day to day life as a city manager, I was dealing with um, not always the most positive. Uh, attributes of employees and and oftentimes dealing more on the disciplinary end than on the uh, more positive end of of uh, employee relations and that prompted me to do a transition of my own and and become uh, a coach a certified coach and um, that brought me to working with Apple chromatic which is a coaching and consulting firm and I also work with the ICMA coaching program uh, right within my profession um, my focus is primarily on helping people in considering uh, transitions uh, who are in the middle of transitions or, or striving to achieve a specific set of goals, um, and that's through coaching, consulting, and, and a few other practice areas. So today, um, I'd like to allow plenty of time for questions at the end, but I have restricted the amount of material we'll cover so that we can add questions in in the middle. Um, I've asked Rachel to just uh, watch the the questions uh, the questions tab here and go ahead and interrupt me in the middle if uh, something comes up so that we can address them as timely as possible. So feel free to use that questions tab and and uh, with that I think we should get started. So some people make career transitions while others consider a transition and decide against it. What we're going to do is look at both possibilities and methods for de and determine what's best for you and for your career. Um, today we're going to discuss deciding whether to make a career transition and then ultimately what if you stay and what if you go. And I want to touch just briefly on the concept of career transition. Um, depending on who's listening to this, we can literally be talking about a transition from one position to another position in an organization, uh, one position to a similar position in a different organization, or we could be talking about currently being an attorney and becoming a doctor. 
something as dramatic as a complete career transition. And I think most of what we're going to talk about today apply across the board to all of um, all of those different issues. So uh, with that, I want to do a little poll here to start with. Um, and that's just asking, are you, uh, are you actively considering a career transition right now? Um, yes or no. And I'll rely on Rachel to put that poll up and we'll see what kind of answers we get real quick. Yep, the poll is live. I'll have to rely on you to tell me the information because I don't see it. So, yep, and I'm going to give it another second. We're at a, we're okay at 30 seconds. We've got about 80 percent of the folks have answered. All right. So, um, we had we actually had a couple different answers. Yes, I've started taking action on a career transition. Was 40 percent. Um, I'm actively considering a transition. 43 percent. And no was 4%. With There are a few maybes here as well today. All right. Well, that that's everyone. I mean, that's that's a, a huge percentage of, of the folks listening are either looking into, have started looking into, or, or are in some other way considering a career transition just for the sake of being on this webinar. So... Um, not uncommon. I mean, I in our in our practice and in my clients, I see a lot of folks who have started to look at this. And again, whether it's a small transition or a large transition, uh, folks struggle with how to deal with this. Um, I want to take a look here um, and take away some of the the mystique of transitions. Um, many people experience transitions in their career, whether through their own desire or through being fired. Um, being laid off, having to close their business, or for a plethora of other reasons. Beyond being fired, there's so many reasons for career transition. And a key reason is, is simply the overall desire for change. Um, gone are the days, I think, when uh, folks graduate from um, college and go into a career and stay with it until uh, their pension and retirement is complete, and people desire change. Uh, Steve Jobs once said, and, and I bring this up on the on the screen here now. He said, "Quote: I didn't see it then, but it turned out that getting fired from Apple was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. The heaviness of being successful was replaced by the lightness of being a beginner again. Less sure about everything, it freed me." to enter the most creative periods of my life. And what I've done here is just shown the career trajectory and the career arc of jobs. And he went from working at Apple to starting completely over after being removed from his position to taking on a project at Pixar that was completely different from the hardware that he had been building for most of his career. And then ultimately coming back to Apple and doing there what he had tried to do at the beginning. And so his career, he, anyone would read his biography and, and look at his career and say that it was an incredible career and it was an incredible a life and an incredible professional um, set of accomplishments. But the amount of transitions that he had were also extreme, um, and in some cases, completely divergent from uh, what he had planned originally. So with that, I want to just do a second poll, which is similar to the first, but have you considered a career transition in the past? And, and to that, I'm saying, in your career, have you ever looked back and said, yeah, I I'm considering something here moving forward. So not are you currently doing it, but have you considered one in the past? Go ahead and um, put that put that slide up or that uh, poll up and take a look at that. Yeah, we'll just give it a couple more seconds for folks to answer. All right, the majority have answered. So we'll share that. So 91% said yes. All right, excellent. 
Well, everyone's in the right place, then we know that. Um, I want to touch a little bit on, on this decision to make a transition. And as you look back at when you considered making a transition, the question is, what did you decide? And, and why did you decide that at that time? How do you approach that fork in the road? And you know, the most common thing we look at is the, the pros and cons list, right? We make a, a list of pros and a list of cons and figure out which way we should go, make a decision and move forward. I would present to you that it's a little more complicated than that. The, the pros and cons list is important, but you need to take it a step further. This is where the majority of your time should be spent with respect to a transitionary question. Upfront, why do you have a desire to make a transition? Is it a desire to get out of something or get away from something that you currently don't like? Is it a desire to run towards something that you've always wanted? And I think that one of the things that can help um, and certainly that we use with coaching clients is a self-assessment of sorts. And, and you can certainly do this with or without a coach, but um, I wanna walk through a few questions that would be self-assessment type questions. So to manage a successful transition, you wanna really reflect on where you're at. So I would I would propose asking questions such as, are you where you wanna be? And if not, do you have a vision for your new career role? Um, do you know how to get from where you are to where you want to go? And what's the roadmap you need to follow? Are your present skills and experience a good fit for your new professional role? And if not, what steps do you need to close that skill gap? What's the most important aspect of the new direction you want to take? And that could be money, it could be status, it could be where you want to be geographically, um, a certain organizational culture you want to be part of, uh, many aspects that are, that, are, uh, that are all able to be looked at. And then um, finally, do you have a game plan for marketing yourself along with your experience and skills? Because at the end of the day, it does come down to marketing yourself and moving yourself forward on that plan. So I think that you, you want to take that self-assessment and really take time to drill in to what it is that is driving the decision for transition. And doing this work up front will pay dividends in the long term because you will have a much easier time creating that roadmap. In the end, you're either gonna to decide to transition out of your current career, and, and by career right now, I'm generalizing, it might be a job, it might be a career, it might be um, you know, your overall profession, or you're going to stay in and possibly create some modifications that provide you with a more fulfilling career. And I think that is a transition we're gonna talk more about, but it's something that you should consider. Are there ways to change your current situation in your current career that make it more fulfilling. And that transition in and of itself can be a very fulfilling transition. Uh, either way, as my father used to tell me, measure twice, cut once. So these were, you know, this is, this is the advice I got doing projects um, in the garage, but it also applies here. Uh, spend time truly exploring what change you desire and what will fulfill you in your career so that you don't end up bouncing from one thing to another and ending up feeling like you're failing or not moving forward in the way you want to move forward. So discussing this fork in the road a little bit more, before you jump to the next thing, consider what else you can do to prepare for a career transition and what might possibly make the transition as smooth as possible. Uh, the, the point of a career transition is not necessarily to leap, um, but it can be a series of smaller steps that help you deal with practical issues you're facing. Um, so let's talk about this a little bit. 
use the tools at your disposal to ensure a solid foundation for your decision. What factors have delivered you to the fork in the road? Are they positive influences? Are they negative influences? What is driving that decision? And, and what factors have held you back from executing a next step in your career or on executing the transition? These are all questions, again, that, that drill back to that self-assessment but are important to have early on. And I think that oftentimes folks uh, need some sort of outside discussion in order to truly drill down on these issues, particularly if what's driving you is a negative influence. Um, I think on the positive influence side, if you're driven by genuine curiosity, interest, or a drive to do something specific, possibly the need for reflection is less. But if you are either trying to get out of a negative situation or feel like the current condition you're in is negative, that to me takes a little bit more reflection. And, and certainly there are ways to do that, whether it is discussing these issues with your mentor or having a, a coach or a career coach or a life coach. Um, but making sure that you have some perspective in gathering data from resources such as mentors, family members, friends, coworkers, and to some extent to ensure that you've really extensively researched the data points leading to your decision. So I, I don't want to dwell on this too much, but don't forget to look internally as well. Um, oftentimes when you're working on these decisions, uh, I have clients that look at meditation to help with this process. And even if you don't typically meditate, taking some time to clear your head and look very strategically at, at what you're doing with the career transition is important. Um, I, I wanna put up a third and final poll so you, you can uh, relax on the homework here in just a minute. But the third poll is, have you utilized coaching or other career counseling to work on your career decision? So um, again, almost 90% of the group listening today has considered some sort of transition. I'm interested in knowing how many of you have utilized a coach or career counselor to uh, help you through that decision? The poll's live. We'll just give a few more seconds for folks to get in their answers. Okay. All right, I've closed the poll and 57% said no, they have not talked to a career coach. 43% have spoken with a career coach about a career transition. Okay, so that's interesting. Far different numbers than, than those that have considered a career transition. Um, I, would, I would contend that it's something that should be considered. It's certainly not for everyone, but in a, particularly with respect to career issues, you have, certainly your supervisor, your coworkers, your family, all of these people are in some way, shape or form very closely tied in to your success and your future. And having a third party can often help provide enough distance to give you a perspective that is uh, a bit clarifying and a bit, um, helpful in in kind of looking where you're where you're at so looking at the pre-flight details um i've got a whole bunch of analogies here and i'm just clicking through them one by one uh a, a key reason a career trajectory or transition fails is improper planning at the decision making stage so as we move through this webinar, we've talked about the importance of truly finding yourself, doing a self-assessment, and understanding what the motivations are for doing a career transition. Once you've decided on some transition, it is crucial that you plan 
the transition out and know what you're getting into. Uh, put the time in on the front end of the decision to ensure that you have the right decision for you. Uh, again, coaching can be a key consideration at this stage of your decision making process. And then the goal is to execute your decision with a very precise plan. And the hot air balloon analogy here is that before any flight, there's there's this pre-flight checklist that you have to go through. You have to make sure that you have your navigation equipment. You have to make sure that you have your, your fuel on board. Your connections are, are good. The flaps on the balloon are working. And, and you check all of these things before you ever, ever lift off. And the goal here is to impress upon everyone that what you want to do is make sure that you have a very detailed plan and that you have the factors in place that are going to help you to succeed long term. So when I work with clients, I use numerous tools to help them assess their values and their career trajectory and aid them through the decision making process. A good coach will help you assess your values, your career, your life, and help you honestly and clearly assess whether the career transition is right for you. And if so, what transition to make rather than just jumping impulsively um, from one situation to potentially a less ideal situation. So creating this plan is key. Uh, the, the university has resources for you in this, and I believe they're going to be announcing uh, some opportunities for some quick coaching sessions as well, if that's something that you would want to consider. So I think that uh, certainly consider getting some outside help, but also give some time to creating your plan and put pen to paper. I think that uh, I'm often saying this, and, and it, it certainly isn't an original thing uh, for me, but writing down your plan putting pen to paper is very helpful in having you just take the time to think about all the considerations that you might need to think about. Um, and, and I think when you're handwriting that out, sometimes you have a little bit more uh, time and focus than you do if you're just typing on a, on a computer. So let's assume you've made the decision one way or another. Either you're going to transition to something uh, else in your organization or to a new career altogether. Uh, the key here is to invest in that decision and don't look back. Uh, give yourself the tools that you need to succeed and reassess for success at regular intervals. And that is a mouthful, reassess for success. Make sure that once you have your plan in place, and you've set your goals, you continually reassess where you're at in achieving those goals and reassess whether those goals are still getting you to where you want to be. Um, much of this goes back, again, to coaching, goal setting. Um, it can be a tool to give you uh, a third party who's a sounding board for working with you to find answers and plans you need. But I think the important part here is to assume you're going to fly higher than that hot air balloon we discussed and consider flying much higher like the spaceship on the slide. I think that once you've made the decision, you want to move forward and, and make sure that you are engaged in actively pursuing that transition. It isn't something you want to do halfway, I think is the is the point I'm trying to make here. Keith, we actually have a question from one of our attendees okay. that I think would be great. Um, they said, I read How to Find Fulfilling Work by Roman Kersnick, and he recommends the opposite of what you're suggesting here. Rather than planning and planning and not doing, he recommends act first, reflect later. Can you speak to the value of these approaches and when each one is appropriate? Sure. Um, great question. Uh, and, and, you know, this is, this is certainly an art and not a science in my mind. I think that there are certainly different, uh, different schools of thought out there. I think that 
personally, when I'm working with clients, I try to have a more calculated and um, measured approach because not everyone is able to just jump. And I think that, um, you know, for some folks that can be financially or, or potentially, um, you know, dangerous in, in a way that, that isn't maybe the most prudent. Um, now, that being said, I will answer the question in a slightly different way as well, in that what I'm talking about is more of a macro level discussion. We have, you know, 30, 45 minutes to talk about career transition. At a much more micro level, I think jumping is appropriate. Uh, once you've put together a plan, there are a lot of things that you just need to jump in and do. And, you know, whether that be for me several years ago, signing up for my career coaching certification, you know, it was a big investment, but it just had to be done. And you jump and you don't look back. And so I think at a macro level, having a solid plan is important, but at a micro level, um, jumping is is certainly helpful. And you know, when you break your goals down to what you're going to do this month, this week, and today, um, there's certainly room for that in in the narrative. Okay, so I think I'm going to keep going. Unless you have uh, more questions, I will certainly um, go to that as well. Check the time here real quick. So if you're recommitting to your career, again, we've talked about this uh, in kind of two, two ways. Uh, recommitting to your career and deciding not to make a transition versus uh, making a transition. For those of you who decide to stay in your current career and not make a transition, and again, the important part here to me is before you hit that fork in the road, really think about why you're making this decision. But once you've made it, uh, what can you do while maintaining your career to make your life even better? Uh, why is staying in your career not a hashtag fail, as I put it? It can be a great new chapter. And be sure to have adequately, ad adequately considered why you were thinking of changing careers and close the book on that option. And finally, how can you convert your current unfulfilling career job into one that fulfills you? So under this scenario, what I'm saying and I'm, I'm thinking of here is that you have something that's wrong or something that isn't settled with you that you're considering this transition for. Um, perhaps there's internal ways of resolving that. And I was giving an interview for a podcast a couple weeks ago. And the, the interviewer asked me, well, you're still a city manager. Yeah, I am still a city manager. And I've got a couple other things that I do as well. And in this case, you know, for me, I found an ability to utilize coaching to help me be more fulfilled in a city management career. Um, so, you know, practice what you preach. That's a good example of how you can tangentially supplement your current career or position to make it far more fulfilling for you while still being part of that career and that and that um that professional that professional uh story arc if you want to call it that on the flip side of that if you're making a transition uh those of you who decide to leave your job or your career and make a big transition, use the tools available to help you evaluate a significant career transition. Um, there's, there's a great deal of information available from the university. There's a great deal of information available from, from coaches and, and on the internet about how, how to execute that and how to make it happen. And whether you decide to simply jump like, like the one attendee asked, or you have a very methodical plan planned out, make sure that you are tapping into all the different resources, particularly human resources and people who are 
in the career or the the profession that you're that you're jumping to or have made the same transition you have because they're out there and you can find them uh, now easier than ever. Uh, really reflect on what made you think of leaving in the first place. That can be a huge motivator to keep you focused and to keep you uh, ticking off those goals to making that transition a reality. And the importance of evaluating what you're looking for or running from can't be underestimated. That's that's a motivating factor. And I think that if you look at what uh, maybe Michael Hyatt talks about in goal setting and, and achieving um, and, and for high achieving people, it's the motivation behind the goal that makes you successful in achieving the goal. And, it, you know, in that case, really remind yourself daily of what those motivations are so that you continue to move forward in your transition. And then finally, how you actually make the transition. Um, this is a matter of really making sure that you're executing that plan. And, and to that end, I think that goal setting and, and time management and, and how you balance all of those things are the most important aspects and making sure that you have a good grasp on that. Whether you decide to leave your current career or stay in it, we're, I'm hoping that you leave the webinar with the, with the understanding that you, if you're in the 90% that have considered this from the first poll, you have work to do in making a change in your professional life, whether you are in your current position or in, or in a transitionary position. So, um, yeah, I hope that, I hope that concept is helpful. And I think that many of these tools that you would use are the traditional goal setting, time management, kind of professional tools that you use to, to get you from point A to point B in a, in a, in a, professional atmosphere. Um, this slide is, is, a, is a short slide, but it, it might be a good place to talk briefly about self-care, um, being kind to yourself, not having unreasonable expectations. Um, transitions aren't easy. Change is not easy. And, and that's re reused and overused and, and, you know, a common statement, but it can't be um, underestimated here. You do need to take time to understand that what you're doing is a very large jolt to the fabric of your life. And so take time to understand how it affects you, how it affects your family members, how it affects your friends and your colleagues. And understand that the process can be long. And you do not necessarily simply flip a switch one day and, and have a new career. But the work that you put into it, obviously, is, uh, is critical. Um, I think that here again, like I mentioned earlier on, the concept of meditation and mindfulness comes back into, back into play. And, and again and again, I see folks who are... Uh, assisted by participating in some meditation or some program where they have uh, some grounding uh, ability to to uh, reflect upon uh, what's going on in their day. I, I don't think it can be emphasized enough that you do need to have buy-in and support from your family members. Um, this isn't a, this isn't a requirement for everyone. But certainly there are, if, if you do have a family and you uh, have folks that are important to you, you do need to involve them in the process. Uh, they are your support network and they help you, um, they help you succeed uh, to that end. The networking involved and the researching and building ties to a new industry or a new career shouldn't be underestimated either. Um, it takes a lot of time and energy to do that. But it is absolutely crucial that you understand that the current career you you are in, you probably, uh, if you're 
like the average person spent years, if not decades, getting familiar with and creating a network around. And in a very abbreviated period of time, moving forward, maybe two to say five years, you're trying to create a network in that period, that abbreviated period of time that is as effective for your new transitionary role as your old network. So be sure that you put the time and energy into that um, because it, it, it'll pay off dividends, but you have to be sure that, that you are aware of that differential in time period, 20 some years to a very abbreviated two to five years. So reach your goals. Execute your plan. Uh, as you execute your plan, find ways to become strategic about researching your goals. Setting up a framework to set, execute, reassess, and set further goals is a key to making sure your transition is a success. And this can't be underestimated. I do recommend looking at the various goal setting programs that are out there once you've identified where you want to get to. Um, I personally really like uh, Michael Hyatt's uh, framework that he sets up. There's four or five others out there that are as good um, and, and great methods for uh, making sure that you can set track and be motivated to achieve your goals. Uh, it's crucial to make sure that you execute your plan for the transition to work. So I have one last tired analogy uh, as we as we come towards the end here. And you know, just to review, we talked about Steve Jobs and measuring twice and cutting once and pre-flight checklists and flying as high as a spaceship, long roads to success. Um, my final slightly dorky analogy is the infomercial. And Ron Popeil says, if I create a product, I can market it as well or better than anyone on the planet. I have the confidence and the passion. People see that and they know it's real. And this is important. You have to have the confidence and passion to put yourself out there and make your plan a reality. Um, you know, reinventing something that was already invented, whether it be a fishing pole or a food dehydrator, is something that inventors do all the time, but we don't do that as career professionals. And so keep in mind, what you're actually doing is reinventing yourself. And the key to this quote is confidence and passion. Whatever you're transitioning to, you'll have passion for. And you should have confidence knowing that you've put yourself in a position of being prepared and having a plan. So with that, I think we're at about 40 minutes. And um, I would like to say just a couple things. If you have questions, I, I am completely aware of the reality that in 40 minutes, this is not a lot of meat on the bones detail type of discussion. Um, there's a lot more behind this and there's a lot more discussion to it. If you have questions or want to talk to me directly, please don't hesitate to email me at keith at um, My email is on the screen there. Um, I would add one other thing. I, I wanna provide um, for, the, for the UFC folks on here, if you go onto that apochromatic.com website um, and sign up for our email list and in the little message box, just put the word maroon in, in there. I'll offer a complimentary coaching session to uh, the first 20 or so people that sign up. I, um, I want to give, I want to give some opportunity to dive a little deeper into what, some of you may be thinking about or or working with and see if um, I can be of some assistance there. So feel free to do that. Again, just put the word maroon in there so that I know that um, 
you signed up from the webinar and I'll shoot you an email and we'll figure out how we can get in touch with each other. Um, but with that, Rachel, I'd, I'd uh, open it up to some questions and see what we have out there. Great, we have, we've had a lot of really wonderful questions. Um, one person asked if you could share examples of clients you've worked with. Um, for example, someone who's uh, transitioned from being an investment manager to X other career. Um, sure. So our, our firm works uh, with a lot of lawyers. And so um, there are a great deal of lawyers who want to transition out of law or practicing law and into other things. And whether that's uh, opening a, a small business that they want to run or, um, you know, going from being an attorney at a big firm to um, going in house somewhere. Uh, there's a lot of transitions like that, that, that we work with. Um, and honestly, there's a great deal of folks who simply want to completely change up what they're doing and, and leave the profession um, that they're looking at. I, I can't think at the top of my head of, of anyone say in investment banking, but certainly at certainly professional roles um, in management. Um, a lot of uh, folks who have their MBA and are working in, in larger organizations and are looking to transfer to a little bit of a, of a different lifestyle. Um, and also I think another good example is, is uh, geographic change. Um, we've worked with folks who by you know, no reason other than a geographic change are dealing with a significant transition, possibly a spouse uh, relocates due to a job and, and you know, the, the other spouse is looking for some sort of transition. So there's a lot of, a lot of different options like that that we've, we've worked with, um, big firms to small firms, um, starting your own business, uh, changing from one uh, organization or entity to another. Hopefully that answers that question. Yeah, I think that was amazingly helpful. Another question is building a network in a new career area sounds really overwhelming. Any tips for where to start? Sure. Well, it it is overwhelming, but it is easier now than ever before. Um, certainly with with the likes of LinkedIn and and some of the other social networking opportunities you have. Um, I think that there is a good example of simply setting a goal and executing it. So start with one or two people, uh, set a goal to network with, meet, create a relationship with one or two people. That's going to pay you dividends in that they're gonna know one or two people and those people are gonna know one or two people. So it really is starting at that very micro level and starting to build that, that career. And I think the, the most amazing thing about something like LinkedIn, that, that happens in real life as well as on the social network, is that you will be surprised when you commit to, uh, let's say you're an attorney and you're going to open a spa you will be amazed when you commit to opening your spa and you start to talk to people about your spa, how many people have a connection to someone who, you know, sells massage tables or is involved in, uh, you know, some aspect of the industry. And you'll be surprised with how many people overlap between where you're going and, and where you're coming from. Great. We have a couple questions about you referring to sunken costs. And so someone said, is sunken cost relevant or is it the income potential relating to staying where you are, where you have expertise and experience versus going to something new? I think it depends on the person. Um, for me, honestly, it's hard to get over sometime what I have, sometimes what I have invested in something. And I think that at least reflecting on that helps. 
Um, if money is the motivating driver, I think that you have to look at that analysis a little bit differently than you do if fulfillment or some other soft, um, softer factor is your motivating driver. So if money is your motivating driver, um, are you able to create a higher level of income from what you've built than what you would be going to? And what is the, what is the time period where it's going to take you um, to get back to the level you're at now? Um, so I, I think that if you have that conversation and you have that planning up front, and you honestly assess with yourself that money is more important than some of these other items, which is, there's nothing wrong with that, um, then you likely will look at that decision-making process slightly differently than you would if ultimately money is secondary to some other factor, whether it be fulfillment in your career, or happiness, or geography, or whatever the case may be. Great. Another question was, um, do you typically find that it takes two to five years for someone to make a successful career transition? And do you know people that are unemployed that entire time? Uh, certainly that varies by, by, um, by the people. I think that, um, you know, this, this varies a lot based on what your position is now. Uh, if you have, if you have money in the bank saved up and you simply jump and assume that you're going to make that transition within X period of time, I think that you have the likelihood of uh, executing that transition in far less than two to five years. Um, if you are starting right now and you want to uh, build up that nest egg, that may take some time. And so when I say two to five years, some of that may just simply be giving yourself a little bit of financial cushion. Um, but the time frame is really, you know, the time frame is really irrelevant because it, it varies based on what you're, what you're coming from and what you're going to. Uh, obviously, if, if, you're, if your dream and your goal is to be an attorney, you're going to have to put three years into law school and, and, you know, probably some more time into applications and LSATs and things like that. If your goal is simply to, you know, move to a larger organization or a smaller organization, obviously that type of transition is, is, is smaller in scale and can be executed quicker. That's really helpful. So what if I'm seeking to make a change, but I haven't interviewed for a job in a long time? Do you have any suggestions for resources to prepare? Well, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the university probably has some resources with the Alumni Association. But I, regardless of, of that, whether or not there are resources there, um, we do a lot of work with folks in uh, just kind of that career readiness sort of area. And, and and it's really vital that you have a very clean resume, a very clean cover letter, and a very clean set of references that that makes you presentable in in the best way possible. And then that you execute that, um, you know, in the interview. I I actually just completed a video on uh, how to make the best uh, out of your interview. And um, and that'll be that'll be online uh, sometime shortly. Uh, and and Amy completed a similar video that was um, relating to the the materials that you need to put together, uh, such as the the resume and cover letter and, and what you should have in that. But it, it's really important that you present yourself as as um, confident and and prepared in that interview and make sure that you practice. And regardless of, of what, I mean, I tell myself all kinds of tricks. I don't want to sit and practice interviewing either. 
And so I tell myself, well, I'll do it off the cuff and it'll be okay. You really need to prepare for those top five most asked questions that you can find anywhere on the internet. Again, hand write out your answers. Make sure you know them like the back of your hand because it's going to give you a confidence level going into that interview that that is just completely valuable to boosting your confidence for the question you don't know how to answer. And it's going to give you material for the question you don't know how to answer. So, um, you know, prepare, prepare, prepare is really the, the mantra for that one. Great. And I have a couple questions um, based on your services that you provide. And so maybe you'll want to email this out. But I had one person asked, um, how much does it usually cost to work with your firm? And also, even though your background is in working with lawyers, do you believe you have the skills to work with someone who has a marketing background and wants to make a change? Sure. So um, to be clear, um, my, uh, my wife Amy's focus area is working with lawyers. Um, I work with pretty much any professional looking at transition across the board. Um, so there's, there's no specific uh, group of folks that, that can or cannot um, benefit from that. Um, cost is, it's a huge variation. Um, there are things you can do that cost a few hundred dollars. There are things that you can do that cost a few thousand dollars. Um, I think that what we have had in our, in our tenure with Apple Chromatic is a hundred percent, if 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 not a hundred percent, very close to it, of folks who believe that the investment was far worth what they end up getting in the long run. Um, whether it's working with a coach or, and this has nothing to do with Apple Chromatic or myself, there are a lot of good coaches out there and uh, what you can get from working with a coach or working with someone to help you with your career will pay dividends over time and it's an investment that is well worth uh, what it takes to you know to make that happen and um, you know we we have we have people that we pay to help us fix our cars and help us clean our houses and help us you know, paint and do yard work and and all of these different aspects of our life but when we go to try to create our career we go it alone and that isn't that isn't normal I guess is what I'm trying to say and so um, don't hesitate to invest in in yourself in in that manner with whoever you work with Great. And we'll be sure to share with everybody. I mean, you can see it here at the website. When I send out the recording, I'll also send out Keith's website and his contact information. So you can follow up with him, it sounds like, to find out what services would be best for you. Another question we had is about age discrimination. Um, so what comments might you have on, I'm in my mid-50s wanting to, to change careers. Are there industries to avoid or industries that you know that don't discriminate? What words of advice do you have for me as a later career person seeking a transition? You know, it's not my area of expertise, so I will limit my comments to to be short, but I will say that I, I did work with a person who is struggling with that same um, with that same issue and, and particularly they're in sales and in their 60s and um, they're having a hard time uh, getting an organization to look at them as as viable. Um, in the sales profession. And I will say that if you've decided and gone through the steps that we talked about with respect to having a solid plan and a goal for what you want that transition to be, I think that your key at that point is having the confidence to either know that you're providing the value that the organization you're looking at needs or that you're if you if you're doing something on your own that you are going to succeed at that and i think that once you have that confidence what 
what I tend to see and what I tend to understand is that folks who feel like they have uh, maybe a card stacked against them or a, or a check mark by their name already going into it tend to have a little less confidence. And I, I would, I would say exactly the opposite. Um, sell the heck out of your experience and your value and your ability to fit in with a team. And, um, and I think that organizations that value that are going to pick up on you and you're going to enjoy that organization better anyway. Wonderful. Um, one other question. Do you help clients figure out what the transition should be? I know I want to make a change, but I don't know what that change should be. Yes, you need coaching. Um, and a coach will not tell you what you should do, but a coach, a good coach will help you find the path to the answer that you already have. And it'll peel back the layers of that onion to make sure that you find your own answer. And uh, as believe me, I'm, you know, inherently sarcastic and I'm inherently doubtful. And as hokey as that sounds, um, it's true. You have the answer inside of you. You need to talk to someone in an, in an informal and safe setting where you can peel back that onion and figure out what it is you've always wanted to do. And I've seen this again and again, particularly in Amy's clients where they figure out, you know, she just had someone tell her last week, I never knew this is what I wanted, but now I know. And that was, that was like the aha moment. So um, it's completely within reach. Wonderful. Well, we're at 1257. Um, I, Keith, I just want to thank you for this wonderful, informative and engaging presentation. And I want to thank everybody that's listening for joining us today. Um, I thank you for the plugs. We do have many resources at the Alumni Career Programs. If you're on LinkedIn, we have an alumni LinkedIn group that could help you do your searching for networking connections there. And I will be sure to send that out. I also want to let you all know that we're continuing with our theme of change this month, and we'll have another webinar, Leading Yourself and Others Through Change, um, on the 21st. So I hope you'll come back for that. And Keith kind of alluded to that we will be offering live online speed chatting, texting events with some career coaches. And also during that time, we'll be offering uh, speed networking with other alums so you can build your network and get a quick uh, seven minute sort of mini coaching session with a, a coach that specializes in career transitions. So I hope you'll join us for some of those other events later this month. Thank you so much for attending the webinar today. Take care and have a great rest of your day. Thank you all. Appreciate it.